to a well-designed business. My name is Luann Nigara, and I'm so glad you found this podcast. Together with my husband, Vince, and our partner, Bill, we have grown our company, Window Works, from the ground up. So I know and I understand the challenges you face in running your interior design business. I also know that your talent alone isn't enough to ensure your success. So on this podcast, we talk about strategies and practical steps to help you grow your business. But make no mistake about it, we have our share of fun here too, mixed in with those aha moments that I love so much. This isn't fluff. Nobody has time for that. Whether you are a new interior designer or a seasoned designer, I am here to help you create and to manage the kind of interior design firm that you dream of. It's straight talk and it's action. Are you ready? Let's get started. Hi, welcome to Power Talk Friday on a well-designed business. On the show today, I'm pleased to introduce you to Lori Sawaya. Lori is the founder of Camp Chroma. I'm also very proud to tell you that Camp Chroma is our newest sponsor here at a well-designed business podcast. Lori Sawaya began her career in color more than 25 years ago as a graphic designer. This was the early 90s when full color printers were just being released to the mass market and the graphic design industry wasn't sure what this new era of color was would bring. But Lori was excited about the innovations and she was intrigued by new systems and color printers that were rolling in all of the time. She quickly learned how color really works and put her hard-earned color expertise into practice every day. She was obsessed with the color management aspect of her job and the training she received was best in class with state-of-the-art equipment. After more than a decade in that job, she wanted to try something new and inspiration came when she and her husband Al were building their first home. Lori decided to go into architectural color design and specification. However, she noticed gaps in the color information and tools that existed. It was obvious to Lori that the architectural and interior design industry was missing a user-friendly and repeatable system for objectively defining, describing, and categorizing color. So like many others that we've met on the show, Lori, rather than go on without the tools she needed, she designed it. And in 2016, Lori launched Camp Chroma, an online training program. Today, you will hear Lori discuss how she teaches interior designers about color order systems like Munsell and how she teaches designers how to quantify how we perceive and experience color using simple hue, value, chroma, and LRV color notations. The result is at Camp Chroma, you learn how to apply your new extraordinary expertise in color specifications for your interior design projects. This can save you time, it can save you mistakes, and it can help you confidently select paint every time so that your clients are happy and your projects are beautiful. So here we go. Let me introduce you to Lori. Hi, Lori. Thank you so much for joining me on the show today and for being the newest sponsor in a well-designed business podcast family. How are you today? I'm doing great and pretty excited to be here. So thanks so much. Yeah. So you were originally on the show back in episode number 62, and we talked all about your company, Camp Chroma, which is a training course for interior designers on color. And so that's a great conversation to go back and listen to. I'm sure we're going to repeat some of the information from that show today. But um, I guess, you know, you've had... Even with that show so long ago, enough interest generated from listeners of the podcast that you reached out to me and said, hey, lady, I want to be a sponsor. (laughs) Yeah, I did. Absolutely. So this is awesome, right? So I'm very excited about this collaboration. And of course, anytime I have a new sponsor to the show, I always like to do this full program devoted specifically to the product and or services that you bring to the interior design community so that when they hear your commercial next week and it's a two or three lines about Camp Chroma, they absolutely have an understanding of what it is more than I can express in just a few moments at uh, the beginning or end of each podcast. So, Laura, just start us off right out the gate. Tell us a bit about Camp Chroma and what it is and what you teach interior designers in your uh, color course there. 
Okay. Well, I noticed in the landscape of uh, design education, uh, there was a bit of a um, underserved market as far as the color science and how color works from a scientific perspective. And so in Camp Chroma, I focus on the principles of classic color order systems like Munsell and NCS and the science of color measurement, and it's called colorimetry. So that's what I focus on, and I call it the, the practical application of extraordinary color expertise because it is uh, extraordinary in that it's very different from um, you know, what you learn in school about color and color theory. It's a, it's a very different perspective on how color works. And um, it's really how color is made, <laughs> right? Uh, what I teach you, the data values that are used, uh, that's how they make color, whether you're talking about paint, plastics, countertops, dyes, whatever, um, this is the basic information, the color DNA uh, needed to make color. And I teach you how to leverage that in your design workflow to uh, you know, specify color accurately, faster, better than if you were trying to just shuffle through some paint chips and eyeball it. Okay, so this sounds like a really cool thing, by the way. <laughs> so what yeah. you're saying is I'm taking it to a very, very basic level. Obviously, I am not a color expert, let alone not an interior designer, which everybody is fully aware of. But I'm thinking back to like little, like basic things when we were kids and we would dye Easter eggs. And if you put yellow and blue together, you got green. And if you put red and blue together, you got a a purple color. And so what you're saying is, is that you are teaching interior designers that actual scientific combination and of course, much more detailed because it isn't just eight colors that you're able to come up with, right? But the, uh, it, it makes sense to me if you understand exactly how fuchsia is created as a color and what goes into creating it, then it makes it more logical for you to to select colors that complement or contrast it is that what we're talking about Ooh, that is so good that is such a good question okay, <laughs> okay. let's let's dig into that shall okay we? okay <laughs> <laughs> number one is i don't do anything with color when it's liquid okay. right 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 everything okay. we deal with in camp chroma is when the color is dry mm -hmm. fully cured Okay. what it looks like when it's done and cooked and what you're going to look at and live with and work with, right? Mm -hmm. So the mixing colors, the colorants, the bases, how the paint store people make make color. I don't care about any of that. Oh, so I'm completely <laughs> down the wrong tangent here. All right. I thought well, I was being well, so clever well, and understanding know, it. <laughs> well, it's all, it's all related. So okay. you really can't go down the wrong path with this because it's all inextricably tied. Okay. But I'm perfectly happy letting the lovely people at the paint store make all of my color for me. They're, they're the paint experts and I like to let them do that for me. Okay. So I can't make any money, to be honest, mixing my own colors is what I found over the years because I tried it. I spent a year um, mixing full spectrum colors is what it is. And that's a whole other story. But I couldn't figure out, you know, why can't I make money? <laughs> well, um, you know, looking at the business model for the amount of time and effort I spent into mixing one can of color, I would have had to charge 500 bucks for a can of paint. <laughs> and I'm like, you know. That's not really a workable model. <laughs> <laughs> this isn't working out right. And then I was a graphic designer for 13 years. And um, so that's really where I learned about the science of color and colorimetry and color measurements and color systems like Munsell. And uh, it's like, there's got to be a better way, people. This has got to be streamlined. There have got to be strategies and tactics, just like there are in graphic design. And so that's what I pulled into my architectural color workflow. And so um, the colors are measured when they're dry. Um, <laughs> um, literally, you take a spectrophotometer, a colorimeter, like a Color Muse or a Nick sensor, which people can buy on Amazon now for under $100. And you get uh, the spectral data or the color data values. And it's those values that are the secret sauce to what we do at Camp Chroma. 
Okay, now it just made me think of another thing. So am I on the right track this time? So when you say that you use a colorimeter or a spectral thingy, are there any... <laughs> Right, right, right. <laughs> is this part of the science that goes into where it made me just realize like Kravit Inc. has an app out where if you take a picture of any fabric, their database and then put it into whatever the app is, they will, their database will find you similar fabrics to that, that thing. So is that what this is? Like you take a picture of a color, but then it tells you the, like you use the word, the DNA, the actual mm -hmm. science of that mm -hmm. color? Mm hmm. Well, that's another good question, too. I swear, Luann, I swear, <laughs> everybody, I did not coach Luann on the question. No, questions. we didn't talk about any questions beforehand, not <laughs> I one. I swear, I didn't. You're like, like walking right into all of the big ones there, Luann. <laughs> this this is my it. superpower. The curious, insanely curious by nature and can get curious yeah. about anything. That's the thing. It's like, oh, okay, let's okay. talk about this. <laughs> it is a superpower. So um, there are color apps out there where you can use your smartphone to take a picture of a color. And then there are different algorithms that can do different things with that information. Okay. But it's a picture of a color. Mm. It's not a color measurement. So you need a device that actually measures color and blocks out ambient light to capture that color. And that's what a color muse does. That's what a NYX sensor does. That's what a color reader pro does. It's an actual instrument for measuring color. Now, in big color labs where, you know, the paint manufacturers and dye stuffs and plastics, they have benchtop spectrophotometers that's um, super scientific, super expensive right. <laughs> device for measuring color and it splits it into different wavelengths and different parts and then they do all kinds of neat stuff with all of that data and information. But the colorimeter that you can buy, actually, actually, you guys, Sherwin Williams is now branded the Color Muse. So you can go buy a Color Muse at the Sherwin Williams store. They call it a Color Snap Match. It's 60 bucks. So you can go buy a handheld colorimeter for $60 that will measure color. Not just take a picture of it, measure color, and then give you all of that good, juicy color DNA, color data values that you need to do all kinds of really cool stuff. Okay. So what used to cost tens of thousands of dollars and was exclusive only to color experts and color scientists in labs, you can go pick it up at the Sherwin Williams store. Wow. <laughs> you can have it delivered Amazon Prime the next day under a hundred bucks. And so it's that science, it's that technology that I am teaching you how to leverage in Camp Chroma. Okay, because it's not enough to just have that data, like you don't know what to do with it or how to work with it and how to have it help you do what you do for a living. So, uh, and I just want to recap and make the distinction. So uh, an app that you take a picture of the color and la la la, that's, a, that's basically that's not the DNA. That's not the, what created that color. That's just a color on its surface being matched on its surface by to another color. So you're talking about this color muse um, is something that will, it's almost like if you could, it's almost like an MRI, it sounds like for your body. Like if you take an MRI, it's going to tell you all about the insides of your body and what makes you up, right? True. True. <laughs> right? Yeah. But if you're not a doctor and you don't know how to read the MRI, it's like, well, been good for you. You know that what that is. So it's almost like I could use this $60 device, but if I don't know how to translate the information or what I do with the information that the device tells me, it's sort of like whatever. Right. You know, is that a spleen? <laughs> or, or is that the lungs? <laughs> exactly. <laughs> what exactly is that? You don't want me reading your MRI. That's However. it. That's it. So why, now I have a, I have a good question though, though. So why yeah. would Sherwin-Williams sell it for $60 if it's a device? What are they thinking that the average consumer is going to gain? The average uneducated consumer. There must be some face value gaining of that. And I understand that you're going to teach us what you actually Add to the layers of the depths of it for a designer, but and I don't know what that is yet, but I'm assuming that's coming. But what? Why would Sherwin Williams sell it for sixty bucks? If I, you know, what am I going to use it for? If I'm a no understanding person, 
That's not okay. a word, but yeah. well, I guess, I <laughs> uninformed guess I'll be person. Sharing, I guess I'll be sharing some more stuff. <laughs> if that's what I'm here for, I guess that's I'll it, do it. That's it. Um, <laughs> no, but to answer your question, why Sherwin Williams is selling the device? Uh, uh, Pittsburgh Paints is another example. They branded the NYX sensor, the NYX uh, Color Sensor Pro. Uh, a couple different brands have. Uh, paint brands have branded these devices, and the purpose is to scan color to find a paint match. Oh. So in the Sherwin-Williams app that goes with their Color Snap Match, a.k.a. the Color Muse, they have all of the color DNA for all of their paint colors loaded into the database for that app. Pittsburgh Paints did the same thing. So when you use their device and you scan a color, you're looking, it, it digitally searches the color library, their color library, for a color that's close. Okay. And so where is is there is there a but there? Is it like, but as an interior yeah. designer, you could what? <laughs> yeah, yeah. You know, so it's what they're marketing those devices to do, scan a color to find a paint color match in their library, in their collection, is a teeny tiny fraction of what those things can do. Okay. <laughs> the apps are displaying all of the color data values. The apps are already displaying the color DNA. And what's been happening, especially in the last year, is more and more people are getting these devices in their hands and they're saying, hey, what is Delta E? Hey, what is this? What does those LCH, what do those LCH letters mean? And I have all those answers. I can teach you what all of that data does and how to apply it in a meaningful way to how you specify color and how to get color right, right? But they're just, you know, it's they're just keeping it really super simple and light as far as scan colors and get a paint match. And the problem is, you said, you know, is there a but? Here's the but with the way that they're marketing the devices and how they're suggesting that those devices be used. You can only search the Sherwin Williams database mm. using the Sherwin Williams app. So, and I had one guy who worked in a PPB, <laughs> PPG store, try not to laugh, but he was like so angry. He like, you know, sent me an angry email. He said, these things are crap. He had a Nick Sensor Pro. I don't understand what you're talking about. I don't know why you think this stuff is so great. I scan a color and the color it brings back is just ridiculously off. It's not even close. And I explained to him, well, the device, the app is going to give you an answer. No one said it's going to be a good answer. But it's going to give you an answer, right? So all it can do is when you scan a color is look through the choices it has in its little library, in its little database. And if there isn't a good match, an, an exact match to, you know, to give you as an answer, it's going to do the best it can. It's going to, it's going to give you some kind of an answer and it might not be a good one. Okay. So, so I, let me understand something before you go further, because I'm going to forget it. So what you're saying is, is if I'm an interior designer and I happen to use the Sherwin Williams, you know, color muse, I'm not going to use it to get me the color match because like you said, so if I do put a thing in there and the, it's going to give me the best available color based on the DNA of the thing I took the scan of. However, yeah. that, could, that could be 15 colors, tones, hues, shades, whatever we're calling it off from the actual match. But if I'm an educated interior designer that's been through Camp Chroma, all I'm using the device for is to get the DNA of the color. And then I don't care if it gives me a match from Sherwin-Williams. I'm now going to use that data that it gives me. And I'm going to actually be able to scientifically identify the color that I want from anybody's color, whether I'm looking at, like you said, plastic, or I'm looking at uh, paint, or I'm looking at whatever. Is that correct? That is absolutely correct. Oh, once you get, there's once you get the those, rub. <laughs> yeah. So, you know, yeah, on the outside, oh, look at that nice little scanner that can help you find a paint color match. Isn't that cute? That's so nice. Mm, yes. But look at all of this data right here. Look at this color DNA. And if you know what to do with that data, and if you know that what resources to pair with that data, you can rule the color world. Okay, so that's like having a Ferrari and driving it back and your kids back and forth to school in it and never bringing it on the open road. Yeah, that's like, you know, <laughs> like being scared off from the Audubon. Yeah. Right. You need to, you right. Need to get in there and you need to drive it. <laughs> you need to drive. 
Okay. Okay. So you know what? I don't know that I had this level of understanding during our first show. So, and it again, proves my theory that sometimes you have to hear things more than a few times before you get them. So, okay. So I'm now very, uh, I, I'm just going to recap it in case there's uh, our friends that are somewhere going, wait a minute, I missed it. So what we're saying is, is that that casual Mr. and Mrs. Smith living in Oshkosh, wherever in the world, they want to match a paint color for their master bedroom into their bedspread. Okay, go into Sherman Sherwin Williams, you know, buy this little color muse thing, click it, it gives you a paint color. It might be exact, it might be a couple tones or hues or whatever off, but it's going to be in the family and it'll probably be fine, okay? But what we're saying is, is that we're not using it to ask us to give us the answer. We're using it to give us the data that it used to come up with the answer. Yep. Love it. Okay. Love yep. it. That's, okay. And that's, that's the difference between a color strategist and a color consultant. Okay. Now take me a step further. So what do I do? Do I use this, this device, this color muse or whichever brand that, that, you know, there are that we use out there. Do I, as a designer, I know I'm going to use the information I learned from Camp Chroma, but as a designer, am I on a daily basis actually taking a picture of the quartz countertops that I'm specifying and I'm getting the color DNA from the quartz countertop or is it, are there, are materials and things that like, no, Luann, you can't take a picture of that and get the DNA. Like what are the surfaces okay. and the things that we can use it for? Right. Okay. Well, first of all, I want to back up and okay. we're not taking it. We're not taking a picture. Okay. We're... We, we, we can't take a picture. Pictures, okay. pictures, art for color strategist. We need measurements. That's what we need and like and love. So we need to take a measurement of the quartz. We can take a measurement of the floor tile. We can measure the color in the bedspread. We can measure the color and get that color DNA. Once you have that color DNA, um, let's start talking real values. Once you start, once you have a hue angle, if you have the hue angle for a color, then you can figure out what other colors go with it. You can identify its characteristics and you're able to start making, anticipate how it's going to render in a space, how it's going to respond to a certain quality of light. If a color in a certain hue family doesn't work in the room, if you have that hue angle, you can look at what hue family it belongs to and you can like logically say, hmm, this isn't working. I need to go find another color from a different hue family, right? Okay. So, it puts you on the fast track to finding the right color for whatever you're looking to do. As far as measuring materials uh, of different colors, that's a common question I get. It's like, yeah, but my quartz, it has 10 different colors in it. What, what am I, you know, right. it's going to give me 10 different readings. It sure is. I tell you how to do that in Camp Chroma. And just really quickly, the, this, you know, pick one spot of the most solid area of color that you can find because it measures super small, right? You only need a teeny tiny dot. Take three to five measurements and then you do an average. Right. Right. right, right, it, right, it, right. This, this isn't, it isn't rocket science. It's color science. <laughs> <laughs> right. So are we, and I have a question about the, the, the point you made just before that, when you said if a hue, a color hue value or whatever the word you used are, is not working in a room and you know what that hue value is, what am I, is it hue value? Is that the word you use? The hue angle. Hue, hue angle, angle. Hue angle. Okay. Mm -hmm. Hue angle. If you know a hue angle is not working in a room and you know that what that hue angle is, I mean to say, then what you said was, so then you're going to not continue to select colors from the same hue angle. You're going to, you know, jump ship and go to a different place. But my question is, is the, f are we basing whether a particular hue angle doesn't work. That's is that's a subjective thing on our part. We're saying, I don't like this color in this room. And what you're saying is, okay, so if you don't like this color in this room and you know what the hue angle is, you're probably not going to like the other five colors in that hue angle. So just go to a different hue angle. Don't putz around with the fan deck and, and make yourself crazy. But the initial like or dislike is based on the whole interior design process that you're bringing to it. Is that correct? Yeah. Yeah. And I, I have a little story to tell you to, to, to underscore what you just said. So on a regular basis, 
I get uh, clients, virtual clients who say, I have tried 12 different grays. I want a grayish and they all turn purple or they all turn blue. So I'm like, okay, give me the list of the grayishes, quote unquote grayish. I hate that word. <laughs> <laughs> the grayishes, because it doesn't mean anything. Right. The grayishes that you've tried and let me take a look. So every single time, right, they give me the list of the grayishes. I go pull the data they're all from the very same Hugh family, right? Mm. So isn't the definition of insanity doing the same thing over and over expecting a different result? Right, right, so, exactly. So I, I like put an end to the chaos and I stop that insanity. It's like you are drawn to near neutrals from this Hugh family. And I understand that you think those are pretty, but it's not working with the quality of light you have to work with in your room. Okay. That's why they're all turning purple. That's why they look like this beautiful, warm lovely neutral grayish color in the store and out on your porch but when you get in on your wall it looks lavender right we can't keep pulling those colors that you think looks pretty in the rack we have to go a different strategy okay and here's the and here are the tactics that we use to do that we go to a different hue family and should we make an assumption that the paint decks are not necessarily set up with anything in mind to this hue angle that you're discussing so that somebody could be four cards over and one out of five of those colors on that latch strip could be in the same hue family as one of them in a four strips over is that is that why we can get keep getting screwed up because i got to believe that a thinking rational person isn't necessarily if she's on her 12th color selection it's not working she's not running down the strip that are supposedly quote unquote grouped together as a family right well you know that's you know this is another really good discussion there is no logic to a fan deck <laughs> I, don't, I don't care i don't care you know someone... we want there to be but there is not Everybody wants there to be that you can't count the leaves in, you know, the, the strips in the, the deck and figure something out. You cannot look at the last color on the strip, the darkest color on the strip and get some indication about the Hugh family for all of the other colors on the strip. Right. There is no rhyme or reason to it. Right. So, um, you know, that those are two super big urban legends of color uh, <laughs> that just will not die is that there is some logic to the order of a fan deck and that you can look at that bottom color on the strip and assume it's the lightest version of the t the darkest yeah. color yeah. right you i have can't. to say i think that's pretty you know at least you know i have to say i think i've subscribed to that although well, sometimes it you could just tell by looking at it that it doesn't seem logical but then that's where you second guess yourself and say well it must be because it's here on the deck on the same strip <laughs> oh my god Luann. Oh, oh that is you know that is just it right on the button it's like people get these little nuggets right these color tips quote unquote then they go try to execute Mm -hmm. And when they try to execute to it, it's not, they don't get consistent results. And then they're like, Hey, what the heck? I've seen this information. I've seen this color tip on all of these color design blogs telling me to do it this way, but why doesn't it work for me? Right. And then they assume, right. They that, assume that they're the that, dummy. Yeah. That they're not good with color. I have and to say I'm having an aha moment right here because I, if I had a nickel for every time I said to a customer of mine, oh, I don't want to help you pick your paint color. I, I hate picking paint color. I, 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 it's my biggest struggle. And the thing is what it is, is, is now I'm having the aha moment because I have exactly experienced that. I have looked like, I, and first of all, I'm never getting hired to help with paint colors. It's always, <laughs> I'm there to do the window treatments. And by the way, what paint should I put with this now that we picked our drapery, right? And Lillian's staying in her lane. <laughs> yeah, right? And the thing is, in the beginning, you'd be like, oh, let me take a look with you. You know what I mean? And the thing yeah. is, what I've learned with doing paint in my own house a thousand times is that I can't do it without painting 16 pieces of, you know, poster board and putting it all around the room. But I have to tell you, I'm having an aha moment and I know why. It's because I've always made an assumption even though I'm looking right at it and see that the color hue of one does not seem the same as the other one on the same strip, that it can't, you know, I've always made an assumption, I must not be seeing it right. I must right? have a little, you know what I mean? Isn't that so right? funny? But yet at the same time, I've always been aware that I have a pretty good sense of color in the sense that I have always had the ability to keep a color in my head. So if I look at your bedspread and I see the color, I can come back to my showroom and find fabrics that have that color 
tone, hue, value, whatever the word is Mm -hmm. in it. And then I would say, well, why can't I pick paint color? And that's because I've laid too much importance on the deck that I thought was smarter than me. Love it. Right, right. (laughs) So there's, there's a couple things to unpack there that you just said. So number one, some of the strips do Mm. there, it's called a letdown, right? When you start with a darker color and then you let it down incrementally and very purposely in steps. So you go from darkest to lighter. Some of those strips and some of those fan decks work out that way. Right. And then some of them are just a hot mess, hodgepodge of different color families. Just enough to make us all crazy. Just enough to make you all crazy. (laughs) So, but you know, those fan decks are put together and ordered for the guys at the paint store to make paint. They're Mm. not put in order for people to specify color and choose paint colors, right? It's their color tool. It's not our color tool. Right, 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 right. Right. So, you know, people get confused about that. Even the paint brands get confused about the objective of what their color tool should be, but I won't pick on them because they're awesome anyway. I love my paint store people. Mm. Yeah. Okay. 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 So then to, to wrap it back around and we think about actionable ways that this is used. So I'm an interior designer. I'm busy specifying a kitchen and I've picked a countertop. I've picked a floor. I've picked, um, or I'm about to pick, uh, I, I have to make a commitment to one thing. So maybe I might make my commitment to my countertop that's just got some color or whatever it is in it. And then what I, you, what you're suggesting is, is that I measure the color DNA of that countertop. And from there, I look at the analytics. I look at the the information that I get based on the exact measurements of that color. And I say, okay, so this is a color floor that I like, and I need it to hit these hues. So then I measure the floor that I picked and it confirms for me, boom, that's why I like it. It's good. Or I measure it and I, th- I see, oh, you know, that's not going to work. Like, is that where this is going? Yeah. yeah and I actually have a really good example uh, my own, you know, I did this and I can't believe I did this. So we renovated the condo that we're in right now. We, we have a couple that we rent. We're living in one right now. And so we gutted it and just remodeled it, finished it up in November. So I chose this floor. It's called farmhouse from doll tile. So I measured it, you know, and it was kept coming out in the yellow, red hue family. Well, yellow, red hue family near neutrals. When you lower the chroma, they go peach. Mm. So I'm looking at it in here and I'm thinking that's not going to happen though. Cause in this light, you know, it's just not shifting peach. I'm seeing these nice golden Brown, you know, tones got it laid down, got an led light in the kitchen. It is a freaking peach floor. <laughs> oh my God. And you're like, I wish I knew something about the science of color. So I didn't make that mistake. <laughs> I knew better. I knew better. I had the data. I chose to ignore the data. Mm. So then I said, okay, fine. Well, you change the light. You change the color, right? Mm. So Al, my husband, Al, we need to get rid of the kitchen light. (laughs) It was really expensive. I don't want to get rid of the light. Okay. Then I need you to change the light bulbs so they're not LEDs. Did you know that LED light fixtures don't have light bulbs that you can change? Oh, yes. Yeah. So I'm stuck with the light fixture until it dies. Oh and God. a peach floor in my kitchen. I ignored the data. Maybe, so, you know, yeah. you have batting practice in the kitchen and you just happen to m- miss and hit the light. <laughs> well, it's really, you know, it's a really tough sell because we're going to eventually buy a house and rent this unit. So, you know. Yeah, well, I, then they won't know the difference. Probably not. But every day it's a reminder as I sit here working in this condo. Don't, don't ignore that data. Right, 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 right. The data doesn't lie. That's right. Okay. Okay. And so how does it work? Like, so are, when, when you talk about measuring color for each of these surfaces, it fat, it does, it is a work for fabrics as well. I'm going to make an assumption. It sure does. You just have to take, you know, three to five, you know, three to five measurements and then you average that out. And again, I'd say it's over and over. You cannot color by numbers alone. Uh, this, this whole process is a wonderfully supportive framework for the creative eye, but it still requires a human linchpin to apply it. Right. So you still, it's a framework. So you still have to, it's not a replacement for your color mojo. It's not a uh, a replacement for your design experience. It's a support system. Well, it sounds like to me, the analogy would be that as a, as a, 
a proficient interior designer, you could probably stand in just about 95% of the rooms in your, you know, every client's home and know that, you know, I'm going to fit a sofa here. I'm going to fit two end chairs. I'm going to fit a coffee table. I'm not going to need a round coffee table. I'm going to need a this. I'm going to need that. But that doesn't mean you still don't take the measurements of the floor plans and plug it all in and confirm exactly what you knew to begin with that you needed a 70 inch, you know, love seat instead of a 90 inch sofa, right? I mean, so it's sort of, you still bring your you to the process. You still bring your years of experience, your innate color, sense and style and taste. But when you get stuck or when you're going to make a big purchase like a floor and you don't want it to be peach, (laughs) you can double check. (laughs) Right. Well, that's, that's a super good analogy. I mean, you measure for window treatments, you measure a couch. Why would you not measure color? Right. Right, 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 right. It's the truth. It's, it's to, to right. It's the truth is to think that, oh, I know color doesn't mean that you can't confirm what you know, or sometimes be schooled on something. Right. Mm-hmm. Yeah, yeah, sure. Yeah. Mm-hmm. yeah. Well, and I have to say with us, you know, we're constantly working with color, Kimberly and I at Window Works. You know, mostly we come in and you've got your paint color on the wall and you've got your carpet on the floor and you've got your sofa sitting there. And now here we are trying to fit, you know, a window treatment color, a drapery fabric backwards into this scheme. OK, we didn't create we don't create mm-hmm. the room from sca- from scratch. And there are mm-hmm. many times when we know we're looking for a gray fabric and we'll go through 30 mm-hmm. grays. And, you know, we're not sitting there, her and I saying, well, that hue angle is wrong. We're just like, that doesn't look right. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Right, right. You know, so you, you, know, you do you do have your own talent to it. But if we brought in three grays and we couldn't find it and we could measure the hue angle of the other pieces in the room, then maybe we could just open up 50 books in the showroom and pick the three hue angles that are right and just bring those to the house. As there opposed you go. To, yeah. See, that's right? the thing as opposed to yeah. traipsing them all in there. Right. That's Although exactly there are it. some people that like the painful process and don't think you're making your money if you don't go through the painful process. <laughs> oh, hey, you know, and that's that's so true. I mean, you know, as far as color classes are concerned, it's, you know, I have to compete with uh, a table, a buffet full of color chips and fabric swatches and countertop samples and floor tiles that you can sit down and you can like tactically play with all of those colors. Uh, we don't shuffle chips in Camp Chroma, right? right? right. So it's I don't have that fun aspect uh, to what we do, and that's yeah. why I'm able to do it online is because you don't have to have it in front of you. You just have to have the values. That's amazing. That's amazing. Well, I have to say, especially when you are – working on several rooms within a project or even several projects at a time that specifying phase once you've gotten past you know your design you know plan and now you're getting down to making the actual selections um you know if you could cut your time on that and even if you sometimes a lot of designers they have they task their junior designer with actually finding the fabric that will be the sofa the the rug that will be the rug the drape that will be the drape and therefore to know that there's some sort of you know, a surety behind it beyond the the eye for just looking at the coordination of the, the textures and the patterns and so forth like that to know that we're not spinning our wheels for 16 hours looking for the right color of, you know, beige or something. Oh, no. Yeah, I don't, you know, I I hesitate to say how long it takes me anymore to like search the data and find what I'm looking for. If I want edge. If I want a lighter version of Edgecomb Gray, for example, from mm. Benjamin Moore, mm-hmm. I, I I can give you that answer in sixty seconds. Mm. If, I to, yeah know. yeah. I have to tell you where I can think where I can th- uh, see how taking a little bit of time with it would be valuable. Is we go in spurts in design. Right now, simple white is a big, big color, okay? Like I, every, almost every job I go into, if the walls are painted white and we're going to match a wood blind to it or something to it, I'll say, oh, what color are the walls? Oh, simple white, okay? So maybe there's 10 whites, five white paint colors that are really popular. If I were to ever just take the time to do the measuring of all the Hunter Douglas wood blind colors and on the Hunter Douglas whites and the duets and like that, and then match them up to the Benjamin whites, now I don't have to stand there for 20 minutes going, okay, is it this one? Is it this one? It's like, oh, you have simple white. That's, you know, vivid white. You have dove yeah. white. That's, you know, dis- designer white. Like, you know what I'm saying? Like, oh, that, well, yeah. In right? my opinion, every, in my opinion, every manufacturer, Hunter Douglas, 
Um, you know, anybody who makes anything for interiors, they should be including a cube value chroma LRV color notation for every single product mm. because people won't miss on the color then. Right, <laughs> right, right, right. And, you know, I teach you about the other, we've only talked about hue angle, but there's also value chroma and light reflectance value. It, they're called the psychological dimensions of color. It's how we see, process, and perceive color. And we can quantify that right? That's what colorimetry is. We quantify the human perception of color. And if I, in some paint brands like Dunn Edwards includes a uh, hue value chroma notation for their colors, right? So if everybody had a color notation, it, it, it's just, it, it would be amazing. I mean, you just wouldn't have to fiddle fart around trying to see some characteristics and colors mm -hmm. that everybody perceives different every anyway, right? Right, right, right. It sounds like to me, it's almost like having all the nutrients and the calories and all the vitamins and everything on the package. It's like if I'm a diabetic and I can, I have to have 23 grams of carbohydrates every meal, you know, what do I, I, I could just look at the package. So you're saying everything, you know, big manufacturers of, of, things that they're putting out every day, tons of thousands, like wood blinds and duets, if they just told us what the calorie content and the carbohydrates and the grams were, <laughs> we'd be almost better off. So how about that, though, that subjective layer, like you, you like you said, like, how about colorblind people? Not, 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 I mean, look, colorblind people are, but, but I mean, there's degrees of colorblindness. So what happens if all, like, what if, what if the floor that you selected was exactly the right floor and it didn't necessarily is it possible that it doesn't necessarily show up and read peach but a person perceives it that way because of their own deficiencies with their what the gifts of color have been giving to them are do you know what i'm saying like their dna of their own color eye perception oh absolutely the hue angle is specific it's very specific the hue angle measurement that you get that piece of data that you get uh, is captured under a balanced quality of light called D65, a two degree observer. So that's very specific. Under this quality of light, this color, this these are the characteristics of this color. So if a color shifts or changes off from its original hue family notation, its hue angle, then you know something's up. Either the quality of light that you're looking at the color under is unbalanced, or your observer, your person, your client has color deficiencies. I'm stumped. So how does that, what does that mean? Does that mean that the color is still presenting in its actual hue angle, but the client is seeing it differently? Yeah. I mean, the color is what it is, right? So how, yeah, Okay. So that's right. So that's what I'm thinking. So how do you account for that? You, what do you measure the customer? Well, <laughs> well the, the magic of this whole process is now, you know. So now you know what you have to deal with, and now you start unpacking your strategies and tactics to find a solution. So I have, and I've, I've had several clients who were color deficient. In fact, my first client was, was colorblind, and she was like super sensitive to color, and we were doing their exterior. So it was, you know, that was my very first experience, and I understand the color deficiency well. So now you can see, you can gauge, you can actually plot it on my color strategist color wheel and figure all this out. So what's going to be the right color to go with the contents of this house? So when people walk in the door, they don't think that you have lost your mind, right. but it's still going to make you happy. You're able to work out all of that because you have the data. As opposed to just pulling stuff out of your hat and trying to make something fit. So are you saying that like most people don't walk around, I, a, a truly colorblind person knows they're colorblind, but the rest of us have no idea. We, you know, I say I'm great at color. Somebody else might say you're full of crap, Luann. You know what I'm saying? Like, so the thing Absolutely. is, so the thing is, what are you doing? Are you taking the time or suggesting that you just have like five surfaces in front of you and you actually know that hue angle of this is going to read peach say but you say to your client what color do you see in this and if the client says i see yellow you're like okay let me test her on this one and do you do like a little almost like a baseline like okay this woman actually is presenting with a degree of color blindness or a color deficiency and so now everything i suggest i have to ratchet one way or another or like how mm -hmm. do you know the person is having those right. deficiencies are you actually testing right. your clients 
No, no. You oh. just, I listen. I don't, I don't talk. I listen. I'm oh, okay. a good listener, right? When right. someone, I do the Caesar Milan thing. How can I help you? And then I <laughs> shut up and I let them talk. I let them talk about the colors that they've tried. I've like, I let them talk about the colors that they love. I let them talk about what hasn't worked for them. Okay. And I ask questions. If I say anything, I only ask a question. I don't tell them anything. That's, okay. you know, my job is to figure it out and give them a solution, yeah. not to talk at them, cool. which is one of the reasons why. I like the data values, right? It's not wordy. There are no words. There's no, you know, complicated, convoluted descriptions. It's Hue value chroma. Boom, you're done. But I did have a client who had been through um, the color consultant at the store, at the paint store. She had hired an independent consultant. She tried an interior designer. And she was upset because they kept, you know, every color they suggested was green. And she kept telling them she doesn't want green. Well, turns out <laughs> that they were all suggesting perfectly lovely options, near neutrals, to work with what she had to work with, but she had a little bit of a bias in her vision, and she saw everything as super green. Mm. So I said, look, this is where these are the Hue families that you know everyone suggested to you that you think looks green. So what we need to do, and of course I had my color wheel up on, shared my screen, I said, we can't do colors from this region anymore. Like the near neutrals from the Revere, Revere Pewter was one. I said, you can't have that one because it looks green to you. So we need to do something else. We need to come up with a different strategy. Let's take a look at another textile in the space. Do we want to take a look at the floor? What, what else can we pull from the contents in the space to find a paint color to relate to that? Because you're trying to tie it to your couch and every, all the colors that, that go with your couch in terms of paint colors are looking green to you on the wall. Mm. We can't do that anymore. So we went to a pillow. Interesting. Interesting. Yeah. So you're in, by listening to her, you, what you were basically saying is that your assessment was that it wasn't that each of these previous consultants were suggesting colors that, 10 other people would have seen as green. She saw them as green. And your cue was that when she showed you all the colors, you're like, you know what? These aren't necessarily all reading as green to the rest of the world. And they, but they right. read green to her. And so right. every color that would technically from a DNA standpoint, go with her sofa is going mm -hmm. to result in something for her, her only that would have mm -hmm. a green feeling to it. Whereas the rest of us would see, purely gray or purely whatever. So you said, yeah. okay, let's stop matching to that sofa. Let's match to something else. And then, then you right. were able to pick a different hue family completely off from that sofa that still matched and worked in the room because it came from the room. Yeah. We wow. used the pillow and we, we shifted to a blue green hue family. So now the colors all relate. It's, you know, well-designed, <laughs> a well-designed room. <laughs> and, um, because, you know, we had the pillows to work with, and she was fine with that. We shifted to the blue-green hue family. But, of course, all of the color consultants that were coming through were looking at, you know, one of the bigger pieces in, in the space, which was the fabric on the textile on the sofa. And, you know, we need the paint color to relate to something. Right. So we'll use that sofa. And, you know, I'm sure they thought she was crazy or difficult. You know, it's not green. <laughs> <laughs> right, because it probably you know. isn't green, and so none it's of them not. really made none of them made a mistake in their color suggestion. They made the mistake in in omission of not knowing what was happening by her perception of the color. Right, everyone yeah. goes down the path of you know you change the light, you change the color. So you know in this in this light, you know some of these colors could shift and look green, but they're standing there in the space looking at Revere Pewter and it's not green. She's standing next to them going, green. "That's too green," and right. they're like, "I don't know what else to do." Right, you're it a lunatic. It's, right. it's yeah. not green. It matches the couch. <laughs> what else am I supposed to do? Right, right. No, it's true. I mean, I I know that I've been in that situation before where somebody has said to me something doesn't match and I'm just like well all right you know but see I automatically yeah. go to that you probably don't see the color not not for I don't I'm not you know, toot my own horn I just I'm like look I know it matches 
you you don't think it does that's on you let's find something else that matches but i don't do it from a scientific standpoint and that's that and the other thing you know what i mean i yeah. also have i've i've actually said to people before when it's been difficult to get to a color selection for them for a fabric or whatever and i feel like we've hit it more than a few times and they're like oh, i don't think it goes i don't think it goes i've actually asked people point blank do you have a degree of color blindness do you notice it when you pick your clothing and stuff because you know what stop torturing me if you actually know this you know what i'm saying yeah. well, but i know, never and- would have known <laughs> i but see my in in my lack of information i never would have known that there would be a way to pick something that that person could see and could be happy with. I would have been like, right. well, look, do you want it to look good for the rest of the world? And we all know it matches, or do you want to just acknowledge that you don't see color? Like, <laughs> <laughs> right. right. Well, here's, here's the beautiful thing about the color strategist color wheel. And we are able to draw a picture of the situation using the wheel, hue families and hue angles. You take the person out of the whole equation. Mm. It's like, look, let's start talking about, the color notations. Let's start talking about the Q family. And it's like, you know, scientifically, you know, D, you know, D65 balance color of light. We know that this color belongs here on the color wheel. And then you can start drawing a picture and, and put all of the focus off on the data and off of who can see color and who mm-hmm. can. Right, right, yeah. right, 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 right. Yeah, because it's not very good to insult your client right to their face, exactly. Yeah, and then it becomes <laughs> very matter of fact. Mm-hmm. And, you know, that's mm-hmm. it's also works really well for um, tuning out uh, other people's opinions. Oh, like, I don't. The mother in laws. Yeah. My mother says problem. this color is the color. <laughs> yeah, and I don't have a problem with that. I don't have a problem with losing control of my consultations. I don't have a problem with the painter chiming in with what he thinks he sees or the mother-in-law chiming in. Well, my mother-in-law said, it's like, look, here's the data. So from this jumping off point, what kind of, you know, where do you want to go with this conversation? I appreciate her opinion, but here's the data. This is what you have. Right, right, right. And just to clarify, when you say you don't have a problem with losing control of the conversation, you you don't, the consultation, you don't mean you don't mind losing control. You mean you don't experience the loss of control because you're, you're keeping it to a scientific discussion, not a subjective, you know, whatever. I love it. Well, yeah, people trust me. Right, right. You're establishing, right. You're establishing the credibility based on the measurements that you've collected, not on, you know, your perception of the eye or whatever it is okay yeah you know they trust me it's like you know here i can i can lay it all out for you mm-hmm. and attorneys uh engineers doctors um they are super super attracted to this approach to color because mm. there aren't too many words men in particular my, a lot of my tribe a big portion of my tribe my following is about 40 percent male mm. And, um, you know, because there's just too many words with all of the other approaches right, <laughs> right, right, that right, are right. out there. There are too many words. So I take all of the words out of it. And it's like, look, from, a, you know, this perspective, from a Hugh family perspective, from a value chroma perspective, this is what we have. If you don't like it, you know, this is what's, you know, this is what works you know, artistically, technically, this is just, you know, the perfect storm of color in your house. Mm-hmm. If this isn't what you want, great. We need to start talking about someone else, you know, something else. Right. And at least you have direction from this point in time. You have, you know, uh, you have a, a pathway, you have, <laughs> you have a strategy now to follow. We know this doesn't work. So now we know where to go next. And you can get it done, right? Right. You're not you're not going round and round in circles. You can move on. Yeah, I love it. I love it. I love it from so many aspects. I love it from the technical aspect of having an ability to measure something and understand the right or wrong of something, like you said, and being able to save a client that trauma of having going through three or four different people's different people's help and paying for that help and really feeling unsatisfied and un, unfulfilled with their selection. So I love that. I also love the ability when I think about a busy design firm, whether it's a solo who's busy or a, a larger firm, being able to, with some confidence, know that other people can be tasked with things. And, you know, it may not be it. Look, of course, there's five different fabrics that could be the perfect complementary fabric from 
a lot of standpoints. It could be texture. It could be pattern on it. It could be, you know, the composition of the fabric. But to know that at least the color value has been established and that's good in all five choices that are going to be put in front of you, the color tones and values and hues are all going to be right. That's cool. I also love what we always talk about on the podcast is being able to set yourself apart, to be able to say on your website, I am a color expert and this is why. This is the course I took and this is what I do and this is what I know know and you you know can rely on me to pick your colors because I know what the heck I'm talking about (laughs) so yeah yeah I mean and you know I know from our previous conversations that a big part of your your business is you are an architectural color um, consultant and that your love of doing that is exterior colors and I have to say more than any place else I think that is um a lot of responsibility because it's not like, look, I've, I've 10 times in my life painted a room and went, you know, after the first walls painted, went, stop that. Don't like that color. <laughs> Let me get back mm-hmm. to the paint store. Don't well, just clean your brush. I'll be right back, buddy. You know mm-hmm. what I'm saying? Mm-hmm. But when somebody's doing the outside of your house, you just sort of live with it. I mean, not that anybody has ever repainted the outside of their house right when it was been painted, but I cannot tell you the number of times that I have repainted our homes the same exact exterior color because I'm like you know I know it works and Vinny will kill me if I pick a color that I hate right. Right. <laughs> you know so I'm much less adventurous with outside colors the price tag is much more expensive <laughs> yeah it is yeah it is a, so it is. You know, to know that that's where your wheelhouse is in addition to creating this course and so forth, but to know that that's your, that's your fun and games is picking exterior (laughs) colors. That says something to me. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. Yeah. Well, that's actually how I started my business in 2004 was doing virtual exterior color consultants. Wow. uh, Consultations. Wow. That's amazing. That's amazing. To think about doing that virtually even is crazy pants to me. Oh, oh, you want to talk about virtual? I'll talk about virtual. Yeah, so that's the thing. You can do that because you, what do you do? Do you have them, do you ship them one of these color muses or ask them to buy it and then ask them to take the measurements for the stone on the outside of the house so they're brick and then that's how you do it online? Is that what, is that how that works? <laughs> that's the way we do it now. In uh, fact, um, one of my clients a few months ago, I she's in Queen Creek, which is like, you know, Phoenix traffic. I live in Arizona. It's It can be nuts, right? So I drove all the way out to Queen Creek to do her entire interior. It was out there all day. And so, you know, they're remodeling, budget this, budget that. So, of course, a week later, she calls and says, we decided to do the exterior, too. (laughs) And it's like, her her name is, um, her name's Amy. I'm like, Amy, I'm not driving out there again. I don't want to drive out there again. Why didn't, you know, really, the exterior? And she said, yeah, and can we have colors, like, by Saturday? This was Wednesday. I'm like, hi, Amy. And um, I said, look, I can't do it. I had other stuff going on, and I I can't get out there in time. And I said, here's what. Get on Amazon, (laughs) order a color muse, do it Amazon Prime. She got in on Thursday, and so she walked out there and, you know, took measurements of her windows because they're a bronze color, okay. the windows, and she took about seven different measurements from different places in the stone, and she just, you know, emailed me the screenshots. Wow. And then you picked the colors for the house. And then I picked the colors for the body and the trim. Wow. And then, of course, I always make people go get samples and, like, you know, test it because you can't color by numbers alone. Right. So it's like go get the colors, make sure you like them. Okay. And then, you know, move forward. You have to decide if that's really the one for you. Right. You still ask them to do that, right? Yeah. And because, you know, they've been through that process of uh, this color came directly from the stone on my house. So, of course, it goes with the stone on my house. Mm -hmm. So they've been through the process right? They've had a hands-on tactile, um, you know, involvement right. in this process. So they're, they have a buy-in. Right, 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 right. They're automatically, they're almost going through the process that, well, not almost, they're going through the technical part of the process with you and you're ultimately advising them, but they're seeing it unfold. Right. It's not some mysterious, you know, and mysterious kind of, you know, I picked that color blue, right? (laughs) If, you know, rolling around only in my special little head 
let's give it a new color. <laughs> right, right, right. I love it. I think it's amazing. So the course is called Camp Chroma, and it is an eight-module course. And this is done virtually. I'm making an assumption. A designer probably purchases the course, and then it's all uploaded to him or her in full, and they can complete the modules at their own pace. Or is it course led by you, Lori? How does it go? It is an online self-paced course. If you want to get in there and sit down and one week and go through all of them, you can. It's called the Four Pillars of Color. So, you know, I've broken it down into the basics, the fundamentals. That's what this course is. So you have a good foundation uh, of how color really works to start from. So you learn about hue, value, chroma, and light reflectance value in depth. Okay. And right now, because, you know, people will be listening to this in real time and they will be listening to this a year or two years from now, right now the course is 747. And so who knows when you listen to this, who knows what it will be in time or whatever, but right now it's 747. And so I think it's, uh, I think if it's something, first of all, if a designer is already interested in color and this is part of his or her you know fun times at Bridgemont High (laughs) you know (laughs) they love that you know so it's adds to that and adds to their credibility and adds to their own understanding of it I think that's interesting and then there are other resources that are available on your website which is campchroma.com so there's 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 um little ebooks that are available and other things that you have there that a designer can just go and explore and uh uh, figure out what they might like to learn. And of course you're, you blog, right? Uh, I, you know, I'm, you I need to, to get right? better. Okay. I, I need th- to be better about that. I, I post in different uh, discussion forums and LinkedIn and I'm kind of like all over the place. That's with my what your thing is. I remember that from our first conversation, yeah. you are a great contributor to other forums and answering questions yeah. and so forth and other yeah. design blogs and or design forums and color forums. That's right. I remember yeah. that. Yeah. Yep. I like, I like the risk and reward there. It's not as safe <laughs> as a blog. No, 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 no. <laughs> it's true. And that takes a lot. I mean, that is a strategy might have actually been your program that we talked about that in episode 62. It is a strategy for establishing your credibility and establishing yourself as an expert is to get involved in different forums and answer questions and stuff. But it takes a lot of energy, patience, and time. And that's not me. I'll, I'll, I'll teach you guys all day long here all the time, share everything I can, but as, cause you know what it is in that you have to have a heck of a lot of patience for that. Because yeah. you'll explain yeah. it and then 15 people will tell you why it's not true. And you're like, you know, whatever. Then why don't you figure it out yourself? <laughs> like, see, see that, that, that doesn't happen to me a lot. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> and there's a reason why that doesn't happen to me a lot. It's because I understand color data values and nobody <laughs> does. You can't argue with the data. That's it. Well, and that's the one thing I do want to just say before we leave. You did not make up this color data value. These are you know, scientific things that you have just figured out a way to harness and use and translate to your own business and then realize that it could be helpful to other designers' businesses. You didn't come up with this system. This is a scientific system that was there. You've explained that to me. Is that correct? No, 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 no. In fact, if you can get behind the counter at a paint store, you'll see C-Lab values, C-I-E-L-A-B values right there on the screen. Right, right. Um, You know, that's the color DNA that they use to make everything. Right. Right. So it's like, why are people going through all of these other methods and gyrations instead of going directly to the source and using, um, you know, right. the nuts and bolts just like they are? Right. Why aren't you using that to specify color? And again, I learned about, um, you know, the Munsell Color Order System and colorimetry and the different color spaces like C Lab and LCH when I was a graphic designer and color management expert. Right, right. So, and, I, yeah. and when I when I when I started in architectural color, I was like, why, where, where, why are they doing it this way? Where are where's all the information? Right. In, in other words, you color. came from a field where you use the scientific information of each color in order to create the graphic graphic designs and then when you went out into doing color consultation you realized why didn't we take the information that's available to one industry over to another industry yeah why is architectural color the only the only industry the only color industry that's not leveraging 
color data values. What's why already there. Not, right. Yeah. Why are people not talking about hue value chroma and LRV? Right. I, and, you know. It's logical. It's so logical. I think it's amazing that you identified it and that you that you do it because because it's true. I mean, you can imagine any graphic artist, nobody would sit there and say, eye it up. <laughs> you know, you'd say, oh, give me, God, no. right, give me the exact <laughs> color combination and measurement for that color so that when I create the Coca-Cola <laughs> logo every time, it's exactly the same, right? Yeah, so, yeah we'll, just keep, we'll just keep printing it until we get one that looks good. Right, yeah. right, right, right. <laughs> I love it. I think it's so good. I think it's so good. Well, I have to say, Welcome again to a well-designed business podcast family here, Lori. And for everybody listening, if you're interested in it, it's campchroma.com. And over the coming weeks, we will be featuring Lori as one of our sponsors in our my little tidbits there. And I'll probably share little bits of information each week on uh, some of the ways that you can help. You know, Camp Chroma can help you in your interior design business. So, well, thanks, Lori. Thanks so much for being on the show. Thank you so much. I'm so excited to be one of your sponsors. I just can't even tell you. Thank you for this opportunity. Love being here. Thanks, Luann. Thanks. Thank you so much for joining me again today. This podcast is a production of Window Works, your resource for custom window treatments and awnings. To learn how we can help you on your next interior design project, go to www.windowworks-nj.com. And if you're interested in working with me on your business, either through masterminds or one-on-one coaching, or you want to know how to get my book, The Making of a Well-Designed Business, or you just want to know what's going on in the podcast land, and where I'm going to be. All of that is found at luannnigara.com. Thank you so much. Have an excellent day.